This morning in the Roadshow Kitchen, it wouldn't be Wednesday without this fine gentleman to my left. You're right there. Who, me? Nick Raybar from Avenue N. Good morning, What's buddy. What's up, nice buddy? To see you. Good to see you. I have tears in my eyes because we've been laughing so hard I know. before we came on. <laughs> it's just the best day ever. Talking about yeah. what else? Seinfeld references. Uh, of course. And, so, and this, that, and, and but we are also talking about Fried green tomatoes. Fried green tomatoes. Fantastic yes. motion picture. Yes, yeah, it is. You know, it's a great motion picture, and it's a great little appetizer as well. Talk to us about the ingredients, buddy. So we have green tomatoes, you know, a very firm, underripe tomato. Yep. Uh, it almost has a consistency of an apple, and we're going to slice them relatively thick. Now, mm -hmm. I only brought two tomatoes here today, yep. so we're going to have to order a pizza or something well, after the well, show. Well, they're right there on the because screen. Because they're not going to be, we're not going to be that full, but they are going to be delicious. Then we're going to do a standard three-step breading. We're going to start by putting them in all-purpose flour which we'll season with a little salt. Okay. Then into eggs and whole milk that we're going to whisk together. And then when you're doing a three-step breading, the final breading is your crust. And for today's crust, we're going to use cornmeal, which is very, very common with fried green tomatoes. Now, my little tip. Here we go. Pay close I attention. I got a little tip. This is where it gets good. Is if you just do cornmeal, it's almost like too much cornmeal. Okay. So I'm going to cut it with some fine uh, breadcrumbs. These are like the plainest breadcrumb. It's not like the Italian seasoned crumbs or for this is like chopped up cardboard. It's so plain. Right. But no, just kidding. But it is just <laughs> like a plain, plain breadcrumb. And I'm going to add a touch of Cajun seasoning in there as well. Give it a little a pop. A touch of Cajun seasoning. A little pop. A, as a little goes a long way when it comes to the Cajun seasoning. As only you can. But if someone's yes. never prepared, you know, fried green tomatoes yes. before, you yes. can take us through the steps. Sure. They're very, very simple. It's, you know, just one, two, three. Outstanding. One, two, three. And you can come get them at Honeybird, too, if you don't want them. This is very, very common there. Very delicious. We've we got love it. it. We've got them here for the full hour. What's better? Talk I'm here, you. baby. We are back in the Roadshow Kitchen this morning with Nick Raybar. He's from Avenue N. He's from the other Avenue N. He's from Honeybird. He's from the Pantry. And Go he's from on. our kitchen every yes. Wednesday. Yes. Yes. My favorite place to be. Ah, yes. And to make... We pay you to say that. Yes, yes. <laughs> and, and and not only not only do I get paid to say that, yeah. but I also uh, get paid to make the, these beautiful fried green tomatoes. Wait, you, Don't they look awesome? Yeah, you yeah. slice nice and thick. Too, yes. which I appreciate because anytime you bread something, yes. if the slice of whatever it is you're breading is too thin, then all I'm tasting is breading, and Jackpot. I feel like that defeats the purpose. It completely does, and. Uh, and a fried green tomato is uh, is something that's very, very unique. And you, you talked about breading. Yeah. The breading is very important because it adds a lot of texture. But the tomato itself is an underripe tomato. So it's okay. it's almost like, I don't want to say an apple, but it's of that consistency. Yeah, it hasn't softened a bit Correct. once they turn red. N not even a little bit. Okay. So when you, you, you can slice it nice and thick, mm -hmm. and it will hold up. To the, it's not going to fall apart right. like a red tomato would do. Sure. Um, and then uh, it also, because of that you know, texture, it has to break down. Mm. So you want to cook these tomatoes for about four minutes. Okay. So let's just go over real quick the breading process. Yes. So it I a took, little different. It, it is a little different. Okay. And you know, the beginning is the same, where you start, you, you always start with flour. Mm -hmm. Flour helps whatever uh, your coating adhere to the next step, which is the liquid, Got where it. you're going to go into like egg and milk. And sure. you season all these little bays of of uh, ingredients with a little salt as you go. Mm -hmm. So you start with the flour, you go into the uh, into the uh, egg, egg and, milk, and milk, and then you go into your finishing, which is your breadcrumb. In this case, I used a plain breadcrumb mm -hmm. and cornmeal, like a, a little more plain breadcrumb. That's what it was. It was the cornmeal. Yes. That's why it was looking different. Okay. And that's very common with fried green tomatoes. You know, oh. in the South, you see a lot of fried green tomatoes. It's a very common dish down there, mm -hmm. and they, it's almost always used with cornmeal. Then, uh, in the cornmeal with the plain breadcrumbs, I put a little bit of Cajun seasoning, mm. just to give it a little bit of that uh, cayenne, paprika, sure. some more southern flavors, and then into yeah. the 350 degree oil for the four minutes. The four minutes is going to break down the tomato. Mm. It takes that long. Okay. If you are premature and you pull it out at three minutes or two and a half minutes, they're not going to fully break down inside and it's not going to be tender. Right. So when you're when you're cooking things like this, you know, time matters and temperature matters big time. Safety matters too, yes. especially if you're deep fat frying at home. I see that bubbling. It's bubbling. And if you go to, you know, sometimes you fill up the oil level mm. and you don't account for like when Wait. you start to submerge things and it yes. raises the sea level here. It's, an, it's a, like a, a hot tub that's too full and it you is. get in and you make it overflow. <laughs> it goes everywhere. It's exactly <laughs> what it's like. And, and so, and but now I'm not allowed to do this at home. 
because sometimes the splatter makes okay. a mess. And Tracy does not like when I, she likes to cook because she's very tidy. She's mm -hmm. very tidy. I'm I'm like a splattery guy. That's okay. Um, so I get, but I get to make them here at the mm -hmm. roadshow, which I love. So um, let's talk about when we take them out. I've got a couple that I did earlier. They look Just, so crunchy and crunchy. They are, they're crunchy and delicious and perfect. And uh, I go on to this uh, paper towel. And if you don't go onto a paper towel, if you don't have the paper towels, which you probably do, yeah, those like yeah. racks are fine oh, to go on to also. Yeah. So let's start to get these out of here. Pretty close to the four minute mark. And uh, we just obviously don't want to run out of time. We want to get them to the plate. Mm -hmm. and this will just absorb the excess oil. Yes, and that's very important because, you know, the, the people say deep fat frying is greasy and it really doesn't have to be even a little bit greasy. Right. Yes, you are cooking in oil, but if you follow the steps properly, if if you go into the hot oil, let's turn this off yes, now. Yes, you bring up a great point. If it's if it's not hot enough, it'll yes. really soak up a Correct. lot of the oil. And then if you don't do something like this, it, yeah. That's Ugh. exactly right. And then, and then and that's th all you taste. And that's all you taste is, is grease. And you won't mm. taste almost any grease in this. Okay. You're just gonna taste crispy, beautiful tomatoes, yeah. um, which I would say you could taste now, but they are like molten. So you okay. kind of have to let them sit. And uh, you but know. It's so tempting. I know. Well, I'm gonna pass you one. Burning my, burning no, you my do mouth. not. Well, you know what? I do have some cool ones here. So why don't we risk that? I have this one that's been kind of sitting. Let's okay. go into this cabinet here, Mick. We don't go into the cabinets oh, a lot well. while we're shooting. What's They're very the well organized. They're very well organized cabinets. And here's this one right here. Okay. You got forks and knife in sure, there. Yeah. And, uh, I was just gonna pick it up and eat it. And so, well, you probably could. And there's, I, I made a little spicy ranch yeah, the dressing. Fork and knife. I'm just gonna hold on. Go to for it, it. now. Here bite carefully, because you never know. They do retain their heat. But aren't they crispy and awesome and salty and like mm. really, really fun? And you can see the steam still coming out, so it is a little warm. But, it's but so look good. at the bite. Show the bite, because the batter look really held bite. on there. It didn't fall off. And that's a well breaded, uh, well breaded yes, tomato yes. right there. Extra crunchy. I like the cornmeal. Nick, the, you've done it yes. again. Thank well, you so we did much. it again, and we are done. We're on the plate. Spicy and we're done. ranch. We're call it a day. Oh, we're spicy ranch. I'm going in. Go, with the, go, with get the other side. No double dipping here. That's Find the recipe how you do online. It.